Now let's stay with the issue of pesky lawsuits. This time the focus is on the potential controversy unleashed by courts that have been ordering fresh primaries outside the stipulated period for their conduct. In effect, the courts are directing political parties whose primaries were marred by irregularities to do them again. Several courts have ordered fresh primaries to be conducted in some governorship and national assembly races in Aquaibom, Taraba, Ondo, Ogun, Borno, and several other states. And the Civil Society Situation Room has expressed grave concern that these court orders may be seriously contravening the Electoral Act, which provides timelines for carrying out primary elections. So what's likely to be the impact of all of this? With more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by one of the co-conveners of the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room, James Ugo Chuku. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you for having me. Tell us briefly your concerns about these court orders that in your assessment seem to be making new rules beyond those in the Electoral Act with regard to the conduct of the primaries. Well, you know, as a situation room, our work is to look at how the whole electoral process is going mm. and how various stakeholders are playing their roles in the election. And we work as a watchdog, if you may say that. And uh, what we look at is uh, understand that any position, any different stakeholder is taking is in line with the provision of the Electoral Act. Mm. But the Electoral Act is the Bible of the election in addition with the constitution uh, somehow. Hmm. So now, uh, this court order that I running up and down everywhere is a complete contradiction to section 29, subsection 1 of the uh, Electoral 2022. And uh, because the, that provision made it very clear that all nominations should be done 180 days before the election. And what we have now is less than 100 days to the election. Hmm. Exactly. So now the question is, uh, are the judiciary now sticking to the uh, provisions of the Electoral Act? Are they making their judgment to affirm the effectiveness of the Electoral Act? So these are the concerns that we are raising around this. Right. But if a case um, is brought before a judge to determine whether or not a primary election was conducted validly, shouldn't he or she have the responsibility of making that decision without being accused of abusing the process? Well, w what we are looking at here is the timeline. Yes, I, I understand that. Yes, yeah, the timeline that we are looking at here. Of course, the judge has the, the leeway to do that. He has the you know the backing of the law mm. and all that to do that but what we are looking at is the timeline the timeliness of all this these are the issues that we are raising in our last right statement. yeah but but I, i'm curious um because the law says that the names of the candidates a party proposes to sponsor at election shall be submitted not later than 180 days before the date set aside for that election provided the candidates have emerged from valid primaries conducted by the political parties but if those primaries were marred by glaring irregularities then they can't have been valid can they of course it can the value yeah, so, so the, 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 the issue that you're raising, I mean, I, I'm trying to understand how you're, you're trying to get the, the, the courts out of that, the, because the, I mean... The issue you are raising is the timeliness of... No, I understand that, but yes. it said that that would happen if, if those primaries are adjudged to be valid. Yes. But if they're marred by irregularities and somebody goes to court, then obviously they're not valid. And uh, what I mean is that if a court determines, which the courts have done, that there were irregularities of such scale that they would need to be, the primaries would need to be conducted again, it means the initial primaries were not valid. So the one around 80 day issue doesn't come up, does it? Oh, well, uh, the way it is, is, uh, you know, 
in going to court and all that, mm. political parties should be mindful of the timeline that has been provided by the uh, electoral act. Yeah, whether, but you were not talking I, about political parties uh, in your statement. You're talking about judges and the judiciary. Uh, yes, because had it been okay, now the, the the judges should, you know, in making their uh, judgment, you know, look at what the provision of the electoral act has said. Because if the something has passed the timeline, then the judges should be very. Smart yeah, but the judges have. Uh, I mean, the as I said. It's a multi-pronged, the law can sometimes not be as direct. That's why you've got judges to interpret the law. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's just in, in written, but it has to be interpreted. And if it says that the case, that if, if primaries were conducted, valid primaries, and it made that very, very clear, it said and that provided the candidates have emerged from valid primaries, if the court determines that it's not valid, then the 180 day thing doesn't come in, does it? Well, I think uh, the, the, the judgment of the court this time around should be looked in line with other provision of this uh, electoral. And what are those other I provisions? look at uh, section 34, for instance. Right. Now. Uh -huh. So these are the things we are looking at here. You know? So now the judges in making this decision should be mindful of the fact that okay now we are going into uh, a general election and the timeline we have is 90 less than 100 days as we speak right mm -hmm. now these candidates we are looking at now because i don't want to mention any particular one before, right. before we've been seen as uh, supporting yeah, a course. particular um, political party and all that but what we are concerned about is that the judges or the judiciary should allow the uh, i mean the independent national electoral commission they should not interrupt their the electoral timetable does it i understand what you mean but, but of course the judiciary could argue that they are not political which presumably they are well, not apparently and, they are and not political yeah. messages are not their business i mean the business is the authoritative adjudication of controversies over the application of laws in specific situations. So these primaries just happen to be cases that have political implications. Well, that's not what the, the courts are deciding. They're simply interpreting the law in those circumstances, aren't they? Well, that is why you see the, we still have a, a provision for appealing the judgment so mm. you know that judgment is not sacrosanct as it yes, is yes it is uh, so somebody can still go to um, another appellate court to challenge this decision and the case right. continue going on like that so the, the judgment as it is now is conducts fresh primaries mm. so the person that the name has been submitted to and can say okay i'm challenging this judgment. yes of course and the whole thing continue dragging yeah now, so in your, I mean, you, you talked about yourself, um, your, your situation room, um, and, and it's a very well-respected um, civil society situation room, by the way. I mean, I've had dealings with them over many years, and they've yeah. been consistently um, top of the, the, the board. But is this connected to the judiciary and the judges who are simply trying to square a circle? Because that's my concern with your, um, your statements that you released, which is the basis on which you're here talking to us. Or is this tied to the increasingly litigious culture that we find in Nigerian politics? Or is it the political parties who are to blame for conducting primaries that are submerged under a deluge of irregularities? Well, I think uh, it's uh, a chunk of each of them. Right. Because if you look at the, most of the political primaries we have, we don't have what, we don't have internal party democracy yet. Most of the uh, candidates that I match from all these primaries are mm. most of them were imposed most of them were rigged in most of them were shoved down the the throat of the delegates then uh, looking at the judiciary as well the people doing all this in all these flawed primaries they have the judiciary at the back of their mind that okay at the end of the day we'll go to court yeah and we then, can tie it uh, in we, knots we can tie it you know so they yeah. can use it that to wear down the other candidate if you mm. don't have the financial muscle to you know, engage in that court cases, they keep on grinding you till you, 
we may right. even decide to leave it. Then the other part again is that we still don't want a democracy where the judiciary will be the one deciding our leadership yeah, every single process. time. Exactly. So yeah. we have a case in one part of the country now mm -hmm. where a, a, a governor has been called a Supreme Court uh, governor and all that. So we don't want a situation whereby after the either primaries or the general election, people have casted their vote, they've made up uh, their mind that this is who we want, then the judiciary will come in. On yeah, but it's always technique. going to be the case, uh, isn't uh, it? Uh, I mean, uh, whether or not you consider the case to have merit or not, that's for the courts to decide. If somebody is aggrieved and they feel, and let's face it, we know the history of Nigerian elections. You've been observing those elections for many years. There have been a lot of malpractices in those elections. Of course, we, if there have been a lot, feels, of, a lot of malpractices in that uh, in, in uh, previous election, and you've seen a situation whereby somebody that actually didn't win has has what has come through yes yeah. uh, the person has been declared winner by court judgment and all that so these are the things we want to put a stop to right by you know calling on the judiciary to be very careful how they interpret this well let's, let's take that line and, and just set out for us what it is um, that you actually want to happen as a result of the objections that you've raised because well, you were focusing on the judges and the judiciary. You were calling on the Chief Justice to step in. And I'm wondering in what capacity you're asking him well, to do that. There's, a, there's a, a public function of recent uh, where, there was, where they did uh, training for election petition yeah. uh, judges and all that. And what we're asking is for them to respect the provision of the Electoral Act. right? And of course, they should make their judgment in the interest of the Nigerian people in the interest of democracy. So in the interest of Nigerian people, if they if they find that the primaries were oh, well, irregular oh, well, and were not valid, they should say, okay, forget it, let's just go uh, no, on in the uh, interest so of the Nigerian as, people. So long as uh, the, what they are defending right. is for the interest of the people. Of course, as judges, they shouldn't be defending what is not right. Mm. And they have the capacity, some have the capacity of defending what is wrong and all that. So these are the things we are looking at. Okay. I want to thank you very much indeed, James Ugochuku. You came a long way, and we appreciate the fact that you made the time to be here to explain this for us. And James Ugochuku is one of the co-conveners of the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.